Welcome back to another mini class. Um, today I'm going to talk about the top-down triangular shawl that we are working on um, in the Beyond the Basics lace class. And I want to talk about, first off, the construction of the actual uh, shawl. It is um, started with a garter tab beginning at the top here. And then every other row we add four stitches with these um, yarn overs. One, uh, two bordering each triangle. One here, one here, one here, and one there. And the two triangles are mirrors of each other. So you're working this triangle and then you're working um, this triangle. It's an exact copy of this one, but you're doing it at the same time. So you work across this section and then you duplicate what you did in this section across this section. And you turn around and you work across and then copy what you did the last section. And you continue on that way until the shawl is as big as you want it to be. Now what makes uh, this construction very easy, very, very easy, very easy to memorize um, and to conceptualize and see what's happening uh, when you see it on paper. When you when it's on the needles, not so much sometimes. Um, patterns written for uh, top-down construction like this are often charted like this. Okay, where you have the first triangle and then some negative space and then there'll be a box which represents the center stitch then some negative space, and then the second triangle. So the chart you would read um, only the boxes that you see. Let me bring this forward so you can see the boxes there. So this first row is knit two, yarn over, knit one, yarn over. And then here's that negative space to the next box, knit one. There's that negative space, and then yarn over, knit one, yarn over, knit two. But sometimes looking at a chart like this can be um, a little challenging to visualize how the shawl is going to grow, even though they have put a couple of repeats here. Here's the first one, and then here's the second one. But still, it's to see how that's going to become a triangular shawl is kind of difficult. So what I like to do a lot of the time is rechart or regraph is something that makes more sense to me and uh, what I've done here uh, is charted just half one of the triangles so I'm going to repeat this triangle twice once and then the mirror of it a second time now the reason that I do this uh, chart just one is so that I can get up many more rows and then I can see how the repeats relate to e each other. So what I'm looking at here are my first um, seven rows and those first seven rows are just plain. I've, um, let me bring the knitting over so you could see what I'm talking about here. We cast on um, two stitches and then we have the stitches for the center triangle. So this, if I move it down, you can see here's my triangle and here is my triangle. Here's that last yarn over, right? That would have been at the beginning here. Okay, so here's my last yarn over. I'm here. The knitting is here. I've finished this row, now I'm ready to start row 9. And here is the mirror of it, the other triangle, which is exactly the same thing. So I work one side of the chart, and then I repeat it again for the second half. Now what's not on the chart here are the edge stitches. So I have these two edge stitches are not here. I start with the yarn over. So on the chart here, I just happen to know that there's knit two, a marker, 
and then begin the chart. And then I'm going to knit up to the next, the next marker. So all the way up here, there's another marker. And here it is. This is my center marker. And with it is the um, center stitch of the shawl. This is what I'll call the spine of the shawl. It's the center stitch bordered by two yarn overs. So this, when I do my mirror, it's not represented. The center stitch is not represented here. It's just, I know it's knit one and then begin the chart. So knit one and then begin the chart. So yarn over and so on to the end where then at the end, I'm going to have two stitches. And the other thing that the charting like this allows me to do is to see how my repeats um, relate to each other, my stitch repeats and my row repeats. So here are my stitch repeats. This is the entire repeat here. My stitch repeat going across and my row repeat going up. And so I can see as I, my row repeats, what happens is with every yarn over here, I'm adding a stitch. So I've added one stitch here, and then here now I've got two, and then now I've got three, and then now I've got four. So as soon as I have four stitches before my first repeat, I know that I'm ready. I have enough stitches. I've added enough stitches to squeeze in another repeat. And what's happening with these yarn overs on this side, I'm also adding stitches. So on row nine here, my um, end of my repeat was right before the last, the last yarn over on that row. And then on row 11, I'm going to have one more stitch. And then on um, row 13, two stitches. And on 15, I will have three stitches after the repeat and before that last yarn over where my center mark, stitch marker is. When I move up to the next section now, I can start, since I've already completed this repeat, now I can begin the way that I, that I was on row 9. So here on row 17, it's going to be yarn over, knit one, and then start my repeat. And when I finish my repeat, I'm going to realize, hey, look, I have enough stitches to make another repeat. So I'll stick a marker there before each repeat to border them. And I'll do my second repeat, yarn over, knit two together, center, double decrease, knit two, yarn over, knit one. And this second half of the repeat is actually this. And after I've worked those repeat, uh, eight repeat rows, then what will happen is I'll start again with uh, yarn over, knit one, work my repeat, stick a marker. I have that second repeat from this section. Okay, I'll work it and then I'll have enough stitches left to make a third repeat and I'll incorporate that. And then I'll work my eight rows again. And once I work up to those eight rows, what will happen is I'll start again. Yarn over, knit one, work a repeat, the first one, the second one, the third one. And then here I'll have enough stitches to make a fourth repeat. And I can continue on this way um, adding enough stitches so that I can add one more repeat every eight rows until the shawl is as long as I want it to be. And then when it's as big as I want it to be, I can um, switch over and work the border. So let me show you what that looks like on the needles. Actually, let me bring my chart back so I can reference it. Okay, so here I am on row nine. Actually, I'm on a full row. Let me purl back really quick. I'm actually on row eight. So charting like that helps me visualize what should happen, what goes next to what, um, how the repeats actually um, relate to each other, and how the shawl grows. And to help myself um, stay on track and keep um, keep track of where I am on the knitting itself, I, I incorporate markers. And I want to talk about what happens when you incorporate those markers because um, in this particular pattern, and maybe in a lot of lace patterns, the markers end up right next to a yarn over. And when you have a marker right next to a yarn over, there are some sneaky things that can happen that will throw you off. So um, I want to describe the most common one just so that um, you don't get crossed up while you're 
while you're um, working on your shawl and then um, get offset. And I'll um, describe that as I work my first repeat row of the um, leaf lace here. Okay, so here I am ready to work row nine. And it is knit the two border stitches. And here's my yarn over. Okay, I'm adding a stitch, so I'm going to knit one. And now I'm ready to start my repeat. So I will stick a marker at the beginning of the repeat. The repeat is yarn over, knit two, and then a center double decrease. The center double decrease is slip two stitches over together as if to knit. So slide them over from the left needle to the right needle. Knit the next stitch and then with your left needle pick up those two slip stitches and pass them over the stitch that had been knit and that will give you this center double decrease meaning the center stitch is in front and it creates a nice little um, vertical line. Knit two, yarn over, knit one. Okay that's the end of the repeat. Now on my chart when I'm up to um, here I am on row nine. I'm up to uh, the end of the repeat and then there's a yarn over before the marker. So you can see on my chart I put, um, I put these little numbers to tell me how many stitches I should have um, before and after each repeat and I've put a little tiny M to tell me I should stick a marker there. So I'm going to put my marker in place as I have and then I have a yarn over and then I can do the second part of the um, second part of the shawl which is a mirror image of what I just did. So I'm going to do my yarn over, yarn over, slip my marker over and now I'm going to start the second um, half of the shawl which is an exact repeat of what I did before. So I'm going to knit one. This is um, the border stitch that's not represented on the chart. And now I'm going to repeat the chart. Yarn over, knit one, and then this is where my next repeat is. Yarn over, knit two, center double decrease. So slip two stitches together as if to knit. Knit one stitch and pass those two stitches over the knit stitch. Knit two, yarn over, knit one. That's the end of the repeat. I'll put another marker there. And then yarn over, slip my border marker and knit two. Okay, so that's what I've just done twice. I worked my edge stitches, knit two, slipped my marker, yarn over, knit one, worked my repeat. Well, I put a marker at the beginning of the repeat, worked the repeat, put a marker at the end of the repeat, made a yarn over, got to my center stitch marker, slipped the marker, knit one, which is the border stitch, so I'm back over here again, knit one, and then worked the row, got to the last marker, slip the marker, and knit two. Okay, so now I'm on the back side. Let me, the back side of this shawl is very easy. You don't even have to reference anything. It's just knit the first two stitches, slip all your markers, and purl across the row. I'm going to purl across the row. Now, one of the things that happens when you use these uh, round markers, and it can happen when you use the safety pin type markers too, but it's more common when you use the round markers, and you have to watch out for that is especially when the markers are right next to a yarn over as they are in, in this particular case, you have to um, 
keep an eye on them because they very sneakily, very sneakily try to reposition themselves and then um, it will fake you out in the sense that you think you will have either um, too many or too few stitches or that you might have done something wrong when nothing wrong has happened at all except that the marker shifted and I'll show you how that can happen in just a second. Oops, knit the last two. Okay, so now I'm ready to work row 11. And now I don't even have to reference the chart because why? I know it's knit to my border stitch, slip a marker, make a yarn over, and now I just have to knit plain up to my repeat. So I'm just going to knit all the stitches, make sure I don't forget my yarn over, knit all the stitches up to the first repeat, slip the marker, and then do the repeat. Yarn over, knit two, center double decrease, oops, slip, then knit, pass slip stitches over, knit two, yarn over, knit one, there's the end of the repeat, and then now I'm just going to knit to up to the center marker, make a yarn over, slip my marker over, knit the border stitch or the center stitch, and then start the chart again. Yarn over, knit to my repeat, slip my marker, that's my repeat, so yarn over, knit two, center double decrease, knit one, pass slip stitches over, knit two, yarn over, knit one, end of the repeat, knit to the end of the row or up to the next uh, border marker, yarn over, and knit two. And I know that I'm going to be working um, four repeat rows, so I don't really have to look at the I don't really have to look at the chart because I've already memorized the very easy repeat of yarn over knit two center double decrease knit two yarn over knit one. So I don't really have to ref I don't really have to look at the chart anymore. I just have to keep track of how many repeats I've got. And you can see the little leaf. Uh, beginning to develop there. Now let me talk about what happens with the markers. Okay, so here's a marker and see it's right next to a yarn over and sometimes what they like to do as you're knitting is shift. They just like to sneak under the yarn over. So now I have one, two, I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Not enough stitches for my repeat. I know it should be eight. So what do I do in this case? I think, oh my God, I mu must have done something wrong. No, what I'm going to do is I'm going to look to either side of the um, repeat. Okay, if I've got uh, more repeats, another repeat next to this, I'll count to see how many stitches are in that repeat. And in this case, I know that I should have three stitches based on my chart here. I'm going to be working row 13. I should have... Um, actually you know, I, I'm on row 12 or row 11 rather I should have two stitches before my repeat so it should be yarn over and then two stitches yarn over two stitches and hey what's this the yarn over is on the wrong side of the marker so I'm just gonna pop that marker back over to the other side where it belongs and now I'm back on track and I've got my eight stitches one two three four five six seven eight so you, you have to watch out for that with these types of markers. These markers will do that too. Like here it is next to a yarn over. It could pop under and go off to the other side, but it's not as common because they're elongated. They're, they've got this little um, bigger section here. So these are, don't do that as easily as these round ones do. That doesn't mean you shouldn't use these round ones. I use them all the time. It just means keep an eye on them. And if they um, have shifted on you before you uh, decide that you're going to rip back or that you've made a mistake, just stop and count the number of stitches in your repeat. 
and see where you're to see where you're at. If I take this now, if I look at this triangle and I look at my chart here, so here I here's my chart, my first repeat, and here's my leaf. You can see how I can I can line it up, and then if I rotate this and do the second side, and it's the same thing. So it's just two triangles. Um, mirroring each other with a center with a center stitch to separate them and now this could be two stitches or three stitches or more it doesn't have to be a single stitch but in this case it's just one so I hope this is helpful in um, in keeping track of where the pattern how the pattern grows and how it um, looks and how to see the stitches um, where they are on the needles and how to uh, visualize what's happening with the pattern and recharting stuff like this is very helpful for me so you can do this on graph paper with pen and pencil or um, or even just excel i use excel with the knitting font Okay, any questions, feel free to drop me a, a note here. Just post in the comments section. Um, if you're in one of my classes, drop me an email. Um, and I guess I'll see you in class. Have a great day.